Welcome back to another episode of Putting the Pieces Together with Jigsaw Learning. We've remarked as a Jigsaw Learning team how fortunate we are to have been busy during this time as compared to some of the people that we know in our circles who have not been engaged in the work that they're used to doing. So I have with us today Curtis and Lorna Hewson. Um, with the work that we're doing, uh, we're talking about structuring and supporting intentional learning and connectedness with our students. So previously we've talked about the intentional layering of meetings to stay connected as adults. But today we're going to talk about the students. But first I want to acknowledge, hi Lorna, we've missed you. Hi Dan. So what have you been up to lately? Oh my goodness. You know, when this first happened, we went, Oh, maybe this is going to give us a good, a good pause. So Curtis and I could do some writing and uh, catch up on a few things. And yeah, that actually hasn't happened. <laughs> we have been as busy as ever, just connecting with partners and helping people out where we can and uh, doing a number of things with our team. So we've just been online constantly over the last little while and doing a ton of learning, I must add. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's great to be involved in a profession that is all about learning. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. So Curtis, recently you and I did have our conversation about the layering intentional meetings for connectedness. How might you say that message connects to structuring intentional direction for staff teams now? Yeah, so we've had the opportunity to work with a few different partners now to help translate that same structured process into collaborative opportunities for staff. So um, really trying to lay out we talked before about the intensifying, ramping up your structures and processes uh, during this time where mm -hmm. um, in, in times of crisis, we don't want to abandon the structure and process. We actually need to depend on it more. Uh, so we've been working, I'm, I'm thinking of one partner in particular, where we've worked to set up um, one weekly leadership meeting where the key leadership people come together to determine what's what do we need to focus on for this week? What are our emerging issues? What's coming up? Then each grade level team meets once during the week to help plan their forward um, planning and um, to engage in, in their collaborative time, including uh, some collaborative team meetings that we now have had a chance to help set up. And then being able to set up different areas so that our student services team can be meeting so that administrative team uh, can be meeting and and all having those pieces uh, connect for us. It's been incredible learning uh, for us, but um, really exceptional opportunities to work with with some partners in structuring these processes because I I think we may be uh, living in some uncertain times for a little while longer and and without those structures and processes we we can't go months upon months in crisis. Um, or react mode. It's it's not healthy. There's going to be a lot of anxiety and and wellness impacts for us if we can't establish those those structures, especially for our staff teams. Uh, I think that there's a natural tendency for us to either try to keep things as normal as they were yeah, before, business as usual. Yeah, and and instead of that, we know that we need to be able to amp up opportunities for people to get together. So rather than doing your monthly meeting that, that once a month connect that some staff teams might have, we actually need to do that more often so that there's an um, urgency in the time that we have, but also the, the absolute opportunity to connect with each other. We've uh, connected with a few of our colleagues who establish for their schools daily check-ins yeah. with staff that every day we meet together, do our check-in and then um, go out. So important. And it's really about being able to understand your own staff and then how do we provide those connection opportunities when we can. But similar to what we said of trying to do those sometimes in whole groups, sometimes in our particular example that we we're talking about in grade level team meetings, and then being able to set up individual uh, as well. So as you talk about these intentional connections, and I know that there's only two of you, <laughs> <laughs> I know our team has been very busy and engaged uh, across mm -hmm. all this work. So Lorna, can you share a little bit about what it's looked like to have our team involved in establishing these structures with teacher teams across the schools? 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this has really been a unique experience because we have typically had the opportunity to join people in their planning and provide supports uh, either, well, mostly on site, <laughs> but um, we really have amped up the opportunity to be able to engage with with teacher teams, as opposed to just our leadership teams, which is primarily where we mm -hmm. focus most of our time. But the opportunity to be able to come together and create those teams and the leveling of, of opportunities with teachers. Um, an example of that is that we've had a chance with one of our partners to be able to really focus in on planning for teachers and helping them to establish what goes home for their learning opportunities and learning kits that go out uh, to their families and to mm. students. So with that, we have one of our team members that meets with uh, the Division One uh, team, mm -hmm. Division One and Two uh, teams on a weekly basis. Another team member who meets with in that school with their junior high uh, level teams. We have another team member then who is meeting uh, and helping to support the student services team, and then we come together as our Jigsaw Learning team to talk about where are the crossovers, how can we help support. Um, within this, uh, with another one of our partners, we've set up that we have one person who is helping to provide um, educational assistant, uh, online learning opportunities, someone else who's doing some literacy coaching, another that is helping to support principals in their planning. And again, having those teams uh, or our team members come and connect with each other just to really ensure the thoroughness of the work. Well, the name of the game is communication and alignment yes. <laughs> when we have so many team members out doing a lot of different work, then we need that chance to be able to come together and connect and also with the leadership um, as well to help them guide the work that's happening in their area and their school. I hear you guys talk and I feel very fortunate to be part of a team that has expertise in so many areas. We truly live that collaborative response approach. It really yeah. is about bringing everyone together to coordinate what's in the best interest of students and schools. And then saying, so what are we going to do? Assigning action focus timelines. Um, yeah, that we don't just come together to chat. It's with intentionality. Absolutely. So Lorna, you've been really heavily engaged in coordinating our teams and all of this work. What would you say is a highlight that's come out of this for you? Oh my gosh, there's just uh, so many different things that that have come out of this work that we've been doing. Again, it's been such a huge learning curve for us, but I would say the the chances that we've been able to really be innovative in our thinking and really explore all kinds of different avenues of support with our team and our team is so like you said, Jen, that they have so many uh, great qualities that allow us to be just super flexible and mold and shape the learning that we're doing to be able to fit the circumstances, because it certainly mm -hmm. has been different circumstances that we've been dealing with. So I just think our opportunities to connect and support our partners and then the opportunities we've had with our great team <laughs> has been fantastic. And so Curtis, as a leader through various levels in various positions that you've been in, and as an mm -hmm. educator at various levels in schools and at the post-secondary level and so on, I know student learning is really at the heart of what drives you. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about what drives you around student learning in this process and what excites you about what we've been able to be engaged in. Yeah, so I think I think this has provided a chance to really reflect on what is it that we need for students to learn. Um, we need to be really, really focused um, at this time on what are the big rocks uh, for us. I know we talk about that as far as that curriculum assessment and instruction uh, loop, but now it's more important than ever. So it's been really exciting. I, I'm thinking again of one of our mm -hmm. partners where uh, we could come and help examine what are the essential outcomes? What are the most important things to be able to attend to right now? Then being able to determine, so what would be good questions that you could be asking in relation to that, since you're not going to be able to, when we think about um, the triangulation of 
assessment evidence and we're not going to have those products. We're not going to have the observations necessarily, especially in communities where some of the online opportunities may or may not be there. Mm -hmm. We have to rely on the conversations. And so how can you establish good formative questions that can get to understanding what the student is, is learning through this and then adjusting that instruction as you go. So again, it's been outstanding to help drill down into truly what's the most important thing, try and develop experiential learning activities, trying to involve families mm -hmm. uh, in this work. If all we're doing is replicating a worksheet driven model into an online environment, we are missing a huge opportunity. I'm thinking uh, specifically of a document that came out of the Missouri Department of Education that talks about during this time, we should see less of this and more of this. We should see less trying to replicate our current classrooms and more about creating learning experiences for our students. And that contact and questioning is mm -hmm. so critical through that, especially when when uh, we know as humans, we're, we're lacking some of those face-to-face -face connections right now. And we've really expanded on that idea of of experiential learning. And so what, you know, the challenge of moving away from the worksheet, workbook kind of activities, mm -hmm. but to move into that opportunity to engage families in the learning too. So how do we create those opportunities where families can be involved and they're part of the learning so that the learning is exciting and, and as a whole group, they're engaging in this learning rather than a child on their own at a desk, just doing their worksheet. Yeah. And uh, with the that parent monitoring and, and increasing their own stress and anxiety. Which is a huge yeah. part of it is being able to move away from those, the space of stress and anxiety when we know that that's a part of the climate right now as it is. Mm -hmm. So how do we move away from that to help families to really engage in some exciting learning together? Lauren, I have a question for you, and it has to do with your background in student services and, and working with EAs. Uh, I know that in this current context, the role of the EA has absolutely shifted because they can't always be sitting side by side and so on. What have you seen happening with educational assistance in this current climate, and how is that contributing to the structured learning for our students? Because typically those roles are connected with students who need support. Yeah, so <laughs> actually with this too, we've really uh, examined the idea of layering supports again and knowing that, you know, we want our teachers still to be guiding what's happening for our educational assistance, but we've really encouraged teachers to, as they do that planning, another layer of their planning is being able to say, uh, for educational assistance, here are some students that I'd like you to connect with, and here are some questions I would like you to ask them or, or to talk about their learning. Just bringing the educational assistance into those conversations that teachers are having and then being able to provide that opportunity back and forth between teacher as well. Another really exciting thing that we've started uh, just just over the last month is an online educational assistant learning series mm -hmm. that allows EAs uh, to do some learning online just independently, but around big ideas that we constantly are bringing forward or just part of building that role mm -hmm. of the educational assistant. Things like what is your role and your responsibilities and, and how do I engage with students who have concerns around behavior? Mm -hmm. So a number of different topics that educational assistants can really do some learning online as well. But remembering that they are an integral part of the learning team. So we wanna make sure that we are layering that approach. So we, we really are allowing them to be part of that mm -hmm. and allowing them to really engage in the learning with students as well, even if the students are at home. So what this has looked like in one of the planning documents that we helped craft with, with one of our learning partners for a teacher is, what is my intention for this week? What essential outcomes? does it connect to? What's my weekly message 
going to be out to families and to students and then developing out what's my EA connection, when am I doing that and what is the key tasks that I'm going to be putting in place that we can uh, be able to connect and work through and then being able to, um, using Lorna's words here again, to layer out the when do you connect with the students? What does that look like? When is your whole whole uh, group instruction? What does that look like? Um, small group, are there going to be any peer-to-peer -peer exercises or activities that we want to engage to? Through the use of those templates, mm -hmm. it's really helped people think through this in a in a bigger way than a typical, what's my what's my plan book today? Well, and for the educational assistants too, we want them to be able to connect with each other. Mm -hmm. We want them to connect with their teachers and we want them to be able to connect with leadership and the whole staff, the staff too. Team. So really making uh, those layers explicit for them. What stories are you hearing out there about how student learning is taking place? And, and have you heard anything exciting or new? Or I actually think that uh, when we get back to school, whenever that might be, things are gonna, going to look a lot different, no matter what. Because we have had the engagement in a different kind of learning that doesn't, it has to push us uh, down a different path. And so I think we are forever changed. Well, and I think the excitement of the abilities to blend some mm -hmm. of our, our learning um, to be able to utilize some of the tools that we've had to learn yeah. rapidly yeah. to help um, to continue to engage families, to understand that we may not be back to a business as usual situation for a very long time. So how do we, again, continue to respond and, and structure those processes for, for our students? So when I think about what's exciting around the student learning, it's the learning <laughs> that's coming out of this for the adults is is what's exciting. And for the teams, we are big believers that education should not be an isolated uh, endeavor, that, that we can do more in a purposeful team mm -hmm. than anyone on their own. And boy, to try and navigate this individually right now would be very, very difficult. Uh, it really is about what can we learn from this experience and how will it impact us going forward? And I think there's a um, number of efficiencies, a number of uh, alternate ways of uh, engaging students, of engaging teachers, of engaging, engaging professional, professional learning, yeah, professional learning. <laughs> yeah, that are going to change incredibly in the future. So do you have any final thoughts or considerations for those that are engaging in trying to structure this intentional student learning and ensuring the connections between their layers of teams? I think it's, again, coming back to that, um, increasing the frequency of when you're, mm -hmm. you're meeting, um, maybe cutting down the amount of time that's needing, but creating more opportunities for it is, is just so important and to reach out please, if there's ways that we can help support to let us know what that uh, looks like and we can help share what we've learned from our other experiences working with a variety of partners. Mm -hmm. We have created these multiple layers and we've encouraged people to meet more often, but it also has been incredibly important for us to take time to just do that quick check-in and that quick connect with each other because we sometimes get online and we want to just jump into the business of things. And yet right now we really need to be able to take a moment to say, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And, and reflect on, you know, there, that space and time that everyone is in right at this moment. I think that's an important part and, and a little bit of the learning that has gone on for us as well. I've known you two for a number of years, and I know that there's nothing you do without the consideration of the context. So hearing from you both on that question, I know it's genuine and sincere. So thank you both very much for your time today. And I'm sure that our viewers look forward to seeing you again. Great. Great. Thanks so much, Thanks Jen. Thanks so much, Jen. Take care. <laughs> Take care. Bye now.